All right, let's talk about some investment opportunities. Joining us right now for that is David Bonson. He is the founder and chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. He's also the author of the upcoming book, The Case for Dividend Growth. And David, thanks for being here today. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. Let's uh, talk very quickly just about the case for dividend growth when you're talking about a market that is now, at least for the S&P, sitting near new highs. What do, you, what do you think of where we are and what would you be telling people to do overall? Well, as far as the market multiple goes, I mean, uh, price level is getting back near its all-time high, but the multiple is still not. And, and that, you know, the valuation level of the market is very reasonable. It isn't cheap by any means. It was cheap three months ago. But I think the market itself is about fairly valued, which kind of brings me to the dividend growth case. There's an awful lot of things that are undervalued in the value space, and there happens to be some great dividend growers that we fit into that. One of them you like is Blackstone. Why is that? Well, Blackstone is kind of the uh, perfect dividend grower for us because they're a company that they're set up in an interesting legal and accounting structure as a LP. They have to distribute this uh, level of profits, and they just happen to grow their profits uh, monstrously. Uh, Blackstone pays you right now on an annualized basis, so it'll be a 7 to 8% yield. But they're also growing organically like no other asset manager. Most asset managers are shrinking. And Blackstone is a rare case because they're in the alternative space, private equity, real estate. And I think that the uh, beginning of what they're doing is quite impressive in retail wealth management. You also like uh, AMJ. That's a basket of oil and gas pipelines. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's more about the space that we really love, and AMJ happens to be the way that we've chosen to to get that MLP exposure. There's a lot of individual MLP names that we really like. Uh, Some clients don't care for the K1s that come with it, so AMJ becomes a way to kind of receive exposure to the space. Again, it's about a 7.5% dividend yield. We've been getting that for a long time while we've kind of had to wait for some price recovery. Uh, It's up about 15% year to date. But the story there, Becky, is very, very simple. Um, Oil and gas at whatever price level, there's more and more of it flowing through pipelines in the U.S. And this is before the story kicks in of the U.S. becoming a leading exporter, which is what we think a major economic macro story will be for the next 10 years, and that is the U.S. exporting natural gas all over the world. These pipelines are very necessary for it, and now, over the last several years, many of them have had to clean up their act financially, uh, their balance sheets, and and it's just a completely different space than it was three years ago. Uh, A lot of companies went away, which is necessary because they were, you know, not well run. Now you have a very different environment, and we love the space for the next two to three years. Dave, you think we're going to see more companies collapse the MLP structure like Williams did with uh, Williams Partners? Yeah, I do. And I think that there will be some uh, enterprise products is an example that simply can't. I think that they are well too deep into it and there's tax reasons and so forth. So you're going to have more that it makes sense for them to do it. Williams was a great example. You had Enbridge's uh, acquisition of Spectra. So there are uh, situations where that tax structure will come down. Remember, the corporate tax reform made the MOP structure less necessary for a lot of the companies. So I think you're going to have a mixed bag there. And that's another advantage, by the way, to AMJ is you can get exposure to both the C-Corp structure and MLP and, and get the best of breed names. And just quickly with Blackstone, do you think they'll keep the LP structure where they'll do what KKR did and, and shift? Yeah, that, it's a great question, and I really don't know the answer. I think that they are genuinely looking at it. There's some significant advantages to doing it, uh, primarily in democratizing the investor base, and I think giving Mr. Schwartzman the multiple that, that he feels the company deserves. Um, but there are also some disadvantages, and, and so they're having to weigh both. The KKR thing, by the way, has not proven to increase the multiple quite as much as people thought that it might. And I think Blackstone's having to look at all of that. So it's sort of a a secret little call option there. It could happen. I think it would be good for the stock, but it's by no means the basis of our thesis. Hey, David, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. When we come-